feel like a teacher. <laughs> One. Ding, ding. All right, everyone sitting nicely, quietly. <laughs> okay, so welcome uh, one and all to Sci-Fi on Ice, book number 12. Axiomatic by our friend from Australia called Mr. Greg Egan. And Where is he from? That is the question. He is from Perth, I believe. Where is that? New Zealand? Definitely not. <laughs> there's no Perth. There's, I know there's a Perth in Scotland and there's a Perth in somewhere else. And Bolivia. there could be. And, yeah, uh, there is in Ontario. Ah. So, yeah, the story's about, well, kind of a, about morals. So it's set, it, well, it's just set in sci-fi times. But so there's a guy and um, we find he goes to, he goes to a store to get some kind of implant to improve some aspect of his will. And he is dealing with the death of his wife and... He confronts his murderer, and uh, that's basically what the story is about, and um, well, his wife's murderer, and uh, yeah, what did you guys think about this story? Um, well, I'll go first for a change. Um, I liked it. I thought it raised some interesting questions and some interesting thinking points. Um, I don't know. I, I feel, though, it wasn't... Like, the glass wasn't quite all the way to the brim. Like, mm. it still felt a bit hollow. Right. Um, like, I, I could see the potential, and I feel like it's going it, to it create a better discussion than I had from the story. But it was, it was nice to read. It was easy to follow. I could kind of see the justification the character, the protagonist, had. And, mm. um, like, the sequence of events kind of, you know made sense um but yeah i don't know maybe i just maybe i just didn't actually endear myself to the protagonist all that much or you know vice versa um mm. i don't know this i just felt like there was a certain je ne sais quoi missing yeah i found this that relatable thing i mean i i should you know this i guess i should be able to relate but then no i haven't I haven't been in that kind of traumatic situation to consider such um, drastic decisions. And yeah, there are definitely some questions that I thought, oh, wait a minute, no, this doesn't add up. And and while there were some really great questions about, you know, free will and, PE, you know, your conditions of your own moral upbringing, you know, whether you uh, would go through with something. And, and obviously, as we'll talk about the, um, the implants, that uh, he gets to condition his mind to go through with something. Um, yeah, I felt um, yeah, I felt there was just something missing. And then for me, I, I lost it when uh, when he felt that he understood uh, his what do you call it? His grief or his like his anxiety over the grief with just the idea that uh, it was as simple as reflexes like kicking a dog because for me I was like well I would never kick a dog unless it was like attacking me you know I just thought wait a minute because at the beginning he talks about his moral upbringing like yeah he believes in uh, the sanctity of life and these kind of things and I thought so well, wait a minute but you're okay with kicking a dog uh, that didn't sit well with me and uh, the last thing I want to say is um, I Despite me being a big fan of Chekhov's gun, I thought I I would have preferred if something different happened at the end that he didn't shoot him, that there was like a a learning moment from him because in the end, as we find out, he just goes he goes down the rabbit hole of getting other implants and doing other uh you, you know getting the implants. So maybe we should talk about the implants just quickly. So the implants. Well, maybe should yeah. be from Dean. First. Okay. All right. I'll. I'll put pause on that and I'll <laughs> hand it over to Dean. Yes. Um, as far as, as, you know, reading a story goes, it was, it was pretty good. Um, everything it climaxed as it should. And then, you know, it ended 
but I I did find it kind of predictable. Mm. Um, yeah, it was once once you were a page or so in, you you kind of knew where it was going. Mm. Um, and then yeah, the 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 kind of last page was a nice little twist with him going back. Um, but yeah, overall it was it was predictable, but it was still enjoyable to read. The uh, the little the little trip he goes on to to get the get into the state of mind mm. for someone who's no, who's who doesn't see themselves capable of of doing what he does. Um, that was was interesting to see their take on that. Yeah, yeah, that kind of like he wants to just get into that frame of mind, um, as opposed to he just wants you know, the courage or the, the cunning or the other things he said he could get as implants. Like, that was interesting that I didn't I didn't necessarily see that implant being the one that he chose because it was a mystery. Um, you know, it was just wrapped in brown paper and then it's not until he, like, basically puts it up his nose that you find out what it is. Yeah. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I can see how that would give you that perspective. That was, that was the only... I think twist for me, genuine twist, a nice surprise, I guess I'd say. But let's talk about those implants, Stephen. Yeah. So, well, you know, what makes this different? What makes this different from, uh, I guess, y- you know, your this 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 uh, mind altering. I guess there's like a bug or something that goes in your brain and it alters your something in your brain. Your connects the wires differently in your brain so that you have you don't have the inhibitions uh in one way or another um and i immediately thought well wait a minute what is it that we normally do when we want to um relieve ourselves of our um how to say our our veneer on the outside it's alcohol or some drug we would take to sort of inhibitions yeah and you're like what was really different because he wanted to kill this guy but he was you know he just was uh, met with his own um, moral uh, foundations, i.e., like, oh, well, he believes in not killing um, people. He didn't, and he wrote, he fought against the death penalty, but yet he's got this contradiction where he's like, but I want to kill this guy who murdered my wife and a, a freak. Well, we, we, he doesn't know the full story, and so a part of his motivation is to find out, to meet the killer, ask him the question, you know, why'd you do it? And, uh, yeah. So, what what was different from these? Like, sh- these are programmed to make you definitely think one way. And may- but maybe when we do alcohol or, or something, we are uh, we. We ho- also lose the, the like motor skills and like you know your finer skills, like comprehension and memory and things like that. Mm. And he doesn't necessarily want to lose those. But then he says, like, when he takes sleeping pills, he just relives the scenario during the day um so it's not something he can even pursue as in like blacking it out there's no blacking it out yeah Yeah, it's like that uh that that itch in your brain that you just cannot get rid of it's Mm. if he subduces himself chemically to sleep then you know that stuff runs through his brain when he's when he's just conscious, but I suppose yeah, it would it would drive. Well, I mean, that kind of grief would drive someone insane. Yeah. See, but I want to raise this point because it's a bit like the um, last time when I said about the poop in the woods. Like it was like, oh, huh? Why'd you say that? He says this line: "I didn't forget her, and I didn't forget her killer. I had loved her, whatever that meant." Mm. And it was just like. Why would you, why did you say whatever that meant? Like surely you know like I'm I'm I maybe I misunderstood it like in a different tone but it's like he doesn't even understand what his love for his wife was because he talks about it not being about Amy and not being about the wife and then I'm like well then why are you so hellbent on killing this guy unless it's as you allude to that he just wants to kill someone um and maybe this is just an outlet for this other perspective he wants to pursue. Maybe he's always had innate murderer feelings. 
Um, but I just thought, what? Because this whole thing is about him getting vengeance and trying to find a way to complete that, to scratch that itch. And then it's like this flippant line where I'm like, yeah, I loved her or whatever. Like, that's yeah. not enough. <laughs> yeah, I thought there was yeah. a lot of dialogue around um, around that, which just confused me. And I think that's quite a good line that, that you read that illustrated that because, you know, how much he mulls over it. And because even at the end, he uh, after he kills him, he, he, he realizes that um, that it didn't didn't resolve his um anxiety that it was uh something else what did he you say um, he, he was he was he was looking for that clarity that little little moment of we call it certainty right and it, yeah, you know certainty. to know certainty and i yeah i thought i didn't i didn't agree with that as a as a sort of a conclusion it wasn't that is not what understanding certainty is that's understanding your decisions and the consequences i mean mm. i but but then he says um that he still finds a part of him still finds what he's going to do repugnant so he's still got uncertainties and he still does it yeah it's just like yeah i don't know i just can't quite understand it's like the author wants to make it about vengeance but then also wants to have this moral kind of debate about how a person can maybe oscillate between these two convictions and can't quite make up the, his mind in terms of how shall I portray this person well I definitely agree that people uh, had to say very capable of very good things and very bad things and almost instantaneously could go from one to another and you know I mean, I know that um, certain people have um, pointed that out to, say, someone like Mother Teresa. They go, well, yes, you know, you point to her charity, but look at these other things that she did. And, uh, it, you know, it's, um, and, like, I think that's probably maybe not the best example. Um, but, but what I mean I is know. everyone has everyone has these um, capabilities of doing the whole... But... Th- yeah? Sorry, but I just want to say, like, even with her, but she had her justification, right? She had this strong belief that people should suffer, even if it meant, like, cruelty in in everyone else's eyes. But she had her justification, whereas I feel like he isn't strong with the justification here. He says, oh, it's about my wife. I can't get this picture up my head, my wife, my poor wife. But then I'm like, ah, but did I love her? And oh, it's not even about her. I was like, well, well, then what is your justification? What is your reason? Because when people oscillate between two different things, they still justify it to themselves. You know, it may be circuitous and hard to understand from the outside, but they have their reasoning. But that that brings me to a point that I was I was trying to think about while reading is, and that is, you know, can we can we make up ethics as we go? Because I I feel. I feel that we can't, but it, but it, I felt like the author was sort of saying like, well, in this situation, the ethics change, and I think, well, I, I don't know this situation. You know, had you had you not done this, had you not taken the implant, had you not drunk the alcohol the night before, then you wouldn't have you wouldn't be in this situation. If you had had the free will to go, you know what, uh, I've got to deal with this differently, and uh, yeah, that's. The sort of thing, you know, I, yeah, morals are, morals are a very tricky thing. Um, Dean, is that you making that noise? Yes, I'm typing. Oh, okay. <laughs> or transcribing? No. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm the closed caption. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it, I was like, I think it's keys. Um... <laughs> Yeah, no, and that's, I, I don't know, I feel like the author was trying to get to something like that, kind of like, you know, he's changing his conviction, he wants to, but he he needs, like, outside help from the, the implant, mm. um, and then he finds that he really likes this new conviction, but I still, I feel like there's there's always this strong root as to any choice, especially if it's a change. You know, like, I, 
I don't believe in certain things as as in I believe that they are wrong. Mm-hmm. And I can't imagine sit, genuinely believing the other. Uh, and so it's kind of like, well, something would have had to happen to me that I then hold on to as like, you know, the nucleus. It's just, uh, yeah, there's just something about the protagonist. I'm like, I don't, I don't understand him. Yeah, because he's basically turning himself into a sociopath. Like an alcoholic that just keeps going back to the drink. Just, even though he does destructive things when he does it, but he, but he you know, when he get when he has his, uh, whatever anxiety after a hard day's work, but then he will still go back to the bottle and still do his horrible yeah. thing. Yeah, because it, it's, it's basically like that, you know, with, with certain drugs, they'll say, oh, you know, the first one's free, and after that, they're hooked. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and this is basically what what's happened. This guy's just, he's instantaneously addicted to that to that rush. So what he's either gonna take this um, implant and have it done forever, or he's going to start killing. Okay. Or is he gonna do both because he takes the implant? That's what I think is gonna happen. He takes the implant yeah. and he has complete disregard for human life, and he's like, oh, done it once, in for a penny, in for a pound. Um, well, that that's, that's what I imagine. That makes me think of uh, the end of the story when uh, he leaves the house, he sees a police car, and uh, and and um, you know the police car stops, and you think, oh, you know, like the gigs up, and well, you didn't really know what's going to happen, but but the fact that you know that the police car drives on by, and then you sort of get the feeling that the protagonist thinks, oh, I got away with it, right, and then. And then it goes on to say that he, um, that he, I guess, uh, keeps on doing it even though he thinks it's repugnant, and, yeah. But then again, he says it's going to take months before they, you know, get down the line to even look at someone like him, but that's still in the future. So it's not like it's been long enough that he knows he's definitely in the clear, um, but he's, yeah, he's so addicted to that feeling, uh, which, yeah, it's like numbing the senses, um, which is what alcohol and drugs do. It numbs the, the you know, the, the voices that are anxious or critical or sad. Um, mm. it's, yeah. You don't feel the consequences until your hangovers, um, well, until your hangover starts, probably. But... Yeah. But he won't have one because he's probably going to set it to indefinite. Mm. He's always going to have that feeling, but yeah, I think it's after the implant, and that he definitely becomes a sociopath. Yeah, it, it, that's basically what's good. Yeah, I mean, if there was another few pages of the story, I think that's the way it would have gone. Chapter but I do two. like how he leaves it open that at the end, where you're like, "Oh, so he's gone back for the same one? We don't know." Or is he just going to go and, you know, have at the store and be like, cherry pick it. Oh, let's try that rainbow, dude. Oh, let's try <laughs> this. Let's try that fetish for feed or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Actually, there was something that I thought was quite interesting when he described um, why people would do uh, would get these implants when they w- were um, opposed to their moral beliefs So say... Say you thought that some kind of fetish was bad, but then you would go and get the implant for that. And I thought, oh, that's... I don't see the motivation there. Is You know, like, they wouldn't do it on their own free will, but they could do it with the uh, the implant. And, you know, whether it was... He... Yeah? No, I was just going to say, but then he says it's, you know, they probably do it to please a partner. Mm, yeah, that... So... That, then that makes sense, because people do that. Um, but then again, like, but he's doing the same thing, you know, going against his feelings. Um, but he's not got the outside, I guess he's got the nagging anxiety, I guess that's an outside influence. Um, yeah. It's still, uh, is it the same thing? Well, have you, have you seen those, um... Like, say, um, 
the the partner or a parent of a child that's been murdered and then you hear them just say we forgive the killer you know we just um we just have to move on and this is how we're gonna do it and and like to be honest I don't know what it's like to be them but when I hear that I always think oh wow that's such a um impressive thing to, to be able to do and to do publicly um but you know they they do that and so it's who knows whether they live on with some kind of itch I think as Dean mentioned before that could well I guess inhabit a space in their mind that you know why don't you do something about this here is this thing that you haven't quite got over yet because I mean if you don't forgive them I guess it's that I'm like yeah I don't know I'm just guessing it's that it's going to be always on your mind thinking about this person whereas you've got to make like the conscious effort of telling yourself like close the chat close the book move on to a new chapter otherwise you'll be in that cycle where you know everything's not really real um but i just think i don't know maybe maybe he's trying to get through that by not necessarily forgiving him but by like becoming him because he he killed him out of fear right he twirled, which I also I find strange. He went, he moved in a circle or something. He spiraled, and then the guy jumped him. And I'm like, why was why was he going around in a circle? I'm like, and then he shot him out of just surprise, which is not too dissimilar to the other guy shooting Amy out of anger. It's extreme yeah. emotion. Ah, I don't like this guy. <laughs> yeah, that was, I guess that, yeah, that's interesting. Like, can you have a good story when the protagonist is un- unlikable? In, I don't want to say it's unrelatable, because I think we all do think about these situations that people, there's like a real um, situation that happens to a few, pe- a few people in, in the world, um, you know, more than, I guess, than I make it out to be. But, but you know, this is, we all think, well, what would, what would we do if this happened to us? And so far, luckily, that's the you know the most I've ever had to think about it. What would I do? I don't know. I wouldn't know. Even with like knowing my own moral uh, foundations, it's yeah, you'd have to think about the future. Like, well, okay, if I did. You know, if I had a clear head and I thought, okay, well, if I did act out these, um, I don't want to say urges, but so the, these things that I could do, what would then come of it? And yeah. I don't know. It's, it's difficult. Have you guys, do you know the story A Time to Kill by um, John Grisham? No. It's that. I that, know the name. I haven't. I it's, can't it's remember that, the story. It starts out with like this horrendous murder, right? So fa- like a daughter gets murdered, and the father, um, just it's the worst thing. It just whatever it is, it's the worst thing. And uh, basically, um, the father gets justice. He does it right, and he just doesn't care about the world anymore. He just wants justice, and he delivers it. And uh, but the point is, is that when you when you read through what he's going through, you just think, oh yeah. I would probably do the same thing, and, you know, it's, it's an awful thing to, uh, con- to, what it, to, um, think about what you would do as well, because it's not easy, yeah. Well, let, I want to talk about the, the dog thing, because for me, I thought there was an easy, um, you know, like, when a writer is trying to finish a story, and you're trying to make it finish, I, I felt that it wasn't as simple as just kicking a dog. That is why Anderson shot um, Amy in the bank. I I just couldn't buy that. I just thought, no. And I think I've met, I said this at the beginning of our discussion, but yeah, I do you guys yeah. do you guys buy it? Because I don't. No, I felt like there were several times where the author was like, oh, we'll put that in because then that will justify me doing this thing later. Mm. And it 
it wasn't like it didn't really fit like jamming puzzle pieces in yeah. when re- like really the guy needs a pair of scissors to make it work and you're like nah just it doesn't go there um like his yeah he's talking about amy being you know the love of his life enough to murder for or just meh did i love her um he'd probably yeah, get over it easier in- incongruous um, mm. in that like he adds these details yeah like oh I get it it was like when I kicked the dog it's like, no it's I mean but you you said earlier right like if he was able to kick a dog then he's probably already has latent murderer feelings because mm. that's that cruelty to animals which is the first sign uh, not the first but one of the early signs I believe uh, you I have no idea but I'll, I'll believe you yeah yeah, it's one of those um, like childhood uh, signs. If you if uh, someone's got like psychotic tendencies, mm. is if they're cruel to animals. It could be a survey for our students and say, "Do you guys do this?" They don't mm. have any experience with animals. Um, well, I mean, there's yeah. a there's a simple test that people do with with that as well. I think I've, I've mentioned to you guys before once uh, the story about the the lady who meets someone at a funeral. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah, he did. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you another time. Okay. I think he did. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure I mentioned to you. Cool. For tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, no, to go back to your point, though, Stephen, um, yeah, I do. I think that was, that was, like, wedged in to then justify him then pulling the trigger quite passionately in that he emptied the gun. Mm. Um, just what two pages later or something. Yeah, yeah. the The scene with Anderson is is pretty quick, and and I think the pacing was fine. I didn't mind that it happened. It, it, you know, I within th- that time period, but I think a little bit more detail or justification, because I really don't like the. I found it. Um, but he was like, um. Oh my god! Now I've lost it. He said, yeah, all the pain of the past five years evaporated. I was drunk with relief. I raised my arms and spun around slowly. Why? Why are you spinning around slowly? Well, yeah, I, I just, think... I think. I, that, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like I needed an extra sentence to explain why... Because obviously he wanted it so that his back was turned so that killer dude could jump him. And therefore, boom, 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 you're dead. Oops, look what I did. Um, and I actually quite like this feeling of, ooh, no remorse. Yeah. Uh, like, it all makes sense, but there's just, it's a little bit of a leap in, in my eyes. So I was just like, that's not a natural reaction for me. When I'm happy and relieved, I don't spin around slowly. See, I, I would have liked it if uh, Anderson had opened up about the killing and him realizing, you know what, like, that Anderson also hadn't dealt with his own... Because if it was unintentional, he probably thought, crap, you know, it would have been on the, his mind. Like, look, I just wanted to steal money from a bank. I didn't want to kill anybody. And mm. uh, although he was, he was a... Mm, he uh, wasn't a nice guy. Wasn't yeah. Wasn't like, just an accidental, you know, of, you know, he was nervous and the gun went off and she was just, her body was just there in the way and... But I feel like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I still, I still reckon that he would have had something. And then, if you could open up about it a bit more, then that might have led to a different discussion and a different ending about, um, about dealing with sort of this sort of trauma, trauma, uh, traumatic experiences. And I, and and with the tied in with the implants being some sort of driver to get to this situation and. But then I don't know how that would turn out, and it would be a different mm-hmm. story, probably. Yeah, no, I agree. Now that you've kind of said it, you're like, yeah, it's too blunt. Oh, I was angry. Yeah. yeah. That's not enough. That didn't satisfy me. Let's, uh, anything else you guys want to... Oh, wait, one last thing. Well, I don't know if it's the last thing, but, uh... I like at the beginning how um, he says his name when he gets his parcel, but then later on he goes, that's the name I gave them. And you're like, oh, it's not your name. Is it Mark Carver? I think. 
it's a little thing yeah. in this, but I, I liked it. I was like, oh yeah, that's not your name probably. So I, we don't know who the protagonist is. I think maybe it's, but I don't know. He is husband of Amy. Mm. Dean, you got any more? Um. No, not really. I did find it suspicious though that they that the the bank robber mm. that they obviously released after seven years yeah is the one who actually killed someone because he was the like the inside he gave he gave all the he gave all the other guys up and all their details is that right but... yeah but i mean it doesn't make sense to me that you know you would the only guy out of all of them who killed someone they would let him go off with a reduced sentence and then let the guys that only robbed the bank, you know, because get... he said it was Miller. He said it was someone else. Yeah. So he told the police that it was someone else and obviously, get, I mean, I can, I'm just imagining, would have given enough information or maybe snitched first so that Miller went, no, no, I'm not. It wasn't me. It looks, you know, less sturdy. Um... And they just pinned it on someone else. Because, like you said, there were no no uh, witnesses. They had to, like, he had to buy the information from a bank teller. So it didn't come from the police. The police were ignorant. Yeah. But, yeah. I, I, I agree, though. It is, it's nice. It's very, um, I don't know. What's it? Coincidental. Nice coincidence. Yeah. It's just, uh, and also the the protagonist's feelings towards his wife. Five. Was, when did the guy come out on parole? Five years after the actual crime. No, I think you were right. For seven. Was it seven? For someone who who's been harboring these feelings of resentment and hatred, and for seven years. And yeah. after you know, after his wife had passed, you know, either you, a you would have made peace with the fact, or b you would have, be for of seven years of building it this up inside of you, you wouldn't need a a little, you know, little chip to to get you that last little bit over the hurdle. Mm. And he'd been out for uh, nine months. I remember that. He had yeah. been out in the streets for nine months. He'd followed him, tracked him, knew his whereabouts and his schedule when he'd be alone. So, like, yeah, he's obviously put a lot of thought into this, which makes the, the comment, you know, oh, I loved her, whatever that means, really incongruous. Like, this man is obsessed. Like, yeah. that's, that's the actions of someone who is desolate for the person they lost so filled with rage that they need an outlet like not someone who's like oh yeah yeah i guess i loved her I, yeah that doesn't it doesn't doesn't track oh no five years you're right five years i think i'm what trying do, to scan what do you yeah. guys think five of five years later i understand i've been out on parole for nine months What do you guys think of uh, the uh, the idea of implants in in general, uh, like being coming re reality just even for us in our own future? I mean, I, I can't wait for it to happen. <laughs> Which one would you get? Um, sociopathic tendencies. Hmm. Nah. I can I can go without that stuff. Perverse fetish. You don't want to show breasts. <laughs> I get it. It's okay. <laughs> Turn my knee into an erogenous zone. <laughs> no, I've <I'll, I'll> left <laughs> my knee quite a few times. <laughs> I don't know. It'd probably be one of those uh, kind of personality ones. Change different aspects of my yeah, personality. Yeah, I, I couldn't do that. I I would want some kind of skill like to be an archer that could you know hit the bullseye or something you know 
I mean, I, okay, Atru is just an example, but you know what I mean? Like a skill of, of doing something. It, no, that's alright, you've always wanted to be Robin Hood. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, you're already the men in tights, so all you need is the Robin Hood part. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you reminded me, though, there's something where she, he said um, that it first came out for languages and business people, but that yeah. didn't sell. Yeah. And I'm like, bullshit. The language learning, like, it's such a huge business. Yeah. Language learning globally is massive. And I was just like, well, that I don't believe. But then again, this possibly is a very quite an old book, a story, whatever. Um, but yeah, that I found hard to believe in the first instance. Um, but yeah, when you say about skills, yeah, I'd probably like to get languages. Yeah, that's one of that was one of the first yeah the first ones that he mentions, and then he then he goes off and says, but then it got really illicit. You know, people people wanted more, right? And they wanted all the illicit and the uh, what do you call it? The um, the degen not Cookie degen. Stuff. Yeah, I want to say yeah. the, some of the de- all yeah, the dodgy stuff. Cookie is probably a good word. Um, you know what? I won't judge anybody, but uh, you know, what do what do and uh, but yeah. I, uh, I don't know, then, then again, like, you think about the satisfaction of, like, doing something from scratch yourself, and then when you get, like, you know, you reach a sort of, like, level one archery, or whatever, you know, and you're like, oh, I did that, right? But if you didn't do it, um, and you just did it through an implant, I don't know, do you sort of lose that human essence of achievement? And yeah, it's kind of like just... the Matrix. Sorry? I said it's kind of like in the first Matrix movie. Yeah, that's I was gonna say that too, right? Where he just he gets kung fu all of a sudden, and it's like, oh, okay, you can do kung fu now, and that's it was kind of boring. That's like the thing in in the Matrix that I didn't like because I thought, oh, like it's one thing about being like, uh, what what pill you take the red pill, right? And you go to the real world, or you take the blue pill and you go back to bed. Is that right? Is that is that how it works? I think I'll, I'm just yeah. gonna say that, yeah. And uh, yeah, if once they were like, "In here's the thing for kung fu," and they just give it to him with uh, like up, like they upload kung fu into him, and it was interesting to watch. But then it didn't satisfy um, the progr- the progress of the story for me in the Matrix. I um, think it would have to like you have to think of the effort that you need to put in to get to the stage you need to be and the benefit you'll get from being at that stage. So, for example, like learning a language, Mm. it's probably better to just put an implant in if you're going on a trip to Japan for two weeks because you could be like, boop, speak Japanese. You can go and enjoy your trips a hundred times more because you can speak to the locals and get a far better experience of the country Um, rather than slaving away learning Japanese for two years before you even set foot and even then it'll be, you know, pathetic Japanese probably, if, you know, me for example. Um, so I think it's, yeah, it's the cost-benefit debate in terms of, yeah, whether you value the sense of achievement more or the outcome of just having the skill. See, where does, where does the line stop? Because say, and because I, no, I think that's really interesting, right? Because if everyone in the world does it, right? And so all of a sudden, people in Russia can access anywhere, anywhere else. People from uh, Indonesia can go anywhere else. And then you kind of think, like, what happens to language at that point, right? Like, does it... Like, you know, how authentic does language become? Do, do like, the locals still speak it, you know, as they do? And then the people who visit just have these implants and then they can just, like mix in uh, without, what do you call it, not resistance, but, you know, they can m- blend in, you know, and then, and then uh, you know, say hello and then thank you for your, you know, hospitality, see you later, or does, or does something else happen? Does language sort of, I don't know, become redundant in this other sort of telepathic, uh, no, what's the word, um, what is that, telepathy, what's tele telepathy? Uh, what's when you ad- can read someone's mind, yeah, telepathy. Yeah. yeah, some kind of, whatever the adjective for that is, um, where communication just becomes 
like a mind reading. I don't know. Is that? I a... think you're overreaching the, what the, the skills can do. I know, I, <laughs> but I'm. Yeah, I think I am. Okay, so let's let's go. Let's a, go. No, the let's language go. would still need to be needed, and I think there was or there would still be a lingua franca because you've got things like academic articles and movies and whatever, and the lingua franca may change eventually. Um, but you'll mm -hmm. still have one language that is used to communicate globally. But in that case, you know, say, yeah, you went to Indonesia and you're just going for a trip, pop in some Indonesian and hey, you know, no struggles, no strife. You can understand. Um, they hopefully won't take advantage of you because you're, you know, an ignorant foreigner. Um, I'll have one nasi goreng. Thank you very much not been to Indonesia so I don't understand if that's a joke. It's the fried it's fried rice and isn't it nazi goreng isn't it like a thing in the menu? We all know. Yeah. Yeah, nazi goreng. Yeah, but also I mean, it's like we I mean we see it quite often that where someone will use the word and you go uh yeah, we don't use it like that. Uh, uh I mean you you might you might have the the academic knowledge of the words and their meaning, but obviously context and experience yeah, tone and, yeah, delivery. Yeah, like, um, the other day, not the other day, months ago, when um, I was asked if I went on a date with Cloudy, and it was like, uh, no, uh, <laughs> we just had dinner. It's like, no, no, that means totally different thing. <laughs> different thing. Um, and it's just like, but, yeah, it was dinner, two people. Like, yes, literal translation could be assigned to that occasion but mm. it carries this weight that in that context very not appropriate um right so yeah it's it, yeah very exact point you can learn the language but you can't necessarily use it so yeah in terms of the implants um just to try and bring it back yeah um it's yeah i think justifiable why some people would use some and not others because the benefit of having it is worth it, mm. you know, and especially, and there's no cost, you know, for some of them, it's a, you know, a nice little adventure, like trying VR, you know, the little bit of escapism. Well, I think in, I think, uh, our discussion has proved that this story with the, the idea of ROMs or implants could have, it could have been a very different story and it could have been very interesting with, uh, the this idea not of free will because i i don't know i think uh, free will to me is done and dusted but it was uh it was interesting i don't agree with um the author on his idea of free will but that um but yeah i think uh the, the role of implants in society um could have been a better story um how it would be done i don't know that's for another author to write Maybe maybe it exists. I don't know. But uh, yeah, shall we? I think we've uh, I think we've uh, gone over this story quite yeah. a bit. So let's go to our scores. Um, who wants to go first? I'll uh, go first. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. I was going to say I'm going to be quite negative, so I don't know if I want to go first. Okay. So. For our little story, and a score out of 500, I'm going to go with a even 250. Is that the lowest score that you've given? I don't know. It's like, it's like a 5 out of 10, right? So Yeah. Alright, let me see. Let me see. Where are we? I don't know. Have we have we have we been overly generous in in the future? Um, I don't know. Uh, well, that one week I wasn't here. You sure were. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> now that that was no, the, they were good stories. Well, we, no, Burning Chrome. Now that was. That yeah, I a, enjoyed Burning Chrome. Oh, that was it was Obviously. a brilliant. It was a brilliant story. Um. <laughs> You know, I think more highly of this story than you, Dean, and uh, I, you know, axiomatic axioms means rules, 
and I I just don't see yeah actually no 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 I'm kind of going negative on it now yeah I don't I don't <laughs> I don't see how that lines up with the story very well um, wasn't that wasn't the the thing that he took called axiomatic I think so yeah but but what an axiom means a rule right you know like a collection of rules Right? Help me out. Just just say, know. just nod your head and go, yeah. Pro-. Anyway, but, uh... Yeah. yeah. I don't know, it's well, like, I mean, axiomatic I... means self-evident. Well, does it? Okay. Well, the word axiom and... comes to mind, and in mathematics you have axioms which support... There are a bunch of rules that support, like, a mathematical, um... Not a th- like a concept in maths, right? But you have axioms that support, like, Say you're doing now nah, I won't go into it, but anyway, uh, so Something I that is taken I'm, to my story, my not my story, my score is uh, I'm going with a good three eleven out of five hundred. Um, I yeah, I think uh, the questions were good. Our discussion was um, full. We had a f- fantastic discussion today. Three hundred eleven is my score. Um, not not well, much more. Sixty one no. points more. <laughs> it's like a, it's a like six. A star or a star or something. Yeah, I probably could have given it a bit higher, but I'm okay with it. Well, my turn now. Um, I was only partly impressed by this story, and now after the discussion, I'm even less so. Because um, there's got so many holes and things that annoy me, so I'm going to be quite negative. Um, Because I think, yeah, the author was partly lazy and just crammed things in to make it simpler, to wrap up loose ends, didn't explain things, so justify the actions in a way that I felt was full and rich. So I'm going to go 203. Nice. Nice. 203, all right, let me put your score up on the screen. Perfect. Okay, that brings us to our aggregate score. Give me a second, let me find... I feel like we could probably have a good guess what the the (laughs) meeting is going to (laughs) be. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Let let me find, where is... Okay. Okay, so thank you guys for the discussion on the on this story, Axiomatic by Greg Egan from Australia. And um, the aggregate score, which the average of uh, our scores, let's have some trumpets. Our sc- uh, aggregate score is 255. That makes it basically an even 5 out of 10. You know, uh, you know, I kind of want to say that's that's not really a pass. Like a five out of ten is kind of a fail, right? And the f- the funny thing is, is I think the questions that the story asks are quite interesting. But I think yeah, it was just a delivery from on the author's part where it really could have been a good story. But it yeah, all the pieces were there. Yeah, yeah, I think um, I think that's it- kind of what makes it disappointing. Yeah, there was too many holes. Like it was just, yeah, it was it was hollow. Like nice veneer, but lacked any substance. Well, can you guys guess where it uh, compares to? Is it is it the lowest? Um, Dean, have you got the? Can you see? Um. Can I see all of them? Oh, can you see the stream? I can. What do you see? Uh, 301, 316. Just waiting for it to come around again. 301 was the previous lowest score, and our current low, our current <laughs> score for Axiomatic is 255. Um, that is our lowest by a long shot, and 
I think it, we're also becoming more critical now. We have more context, so mm. it's like you you're thinking of other stories as well and being like, well, I didn't enjoy it as much as that, so I can't go that high, or you know, it's not as bad as that. So I think it's gonna be yeah, probably more wide ranging. The more books we read, I mean, I I feel a bit torn because on one hand. It was good to read, but you know, I quite enjoyed like having the criticism as well to kind of. I enjoyed disagreeing with the author, and so, you know, you know what I mean. I, it's not a bad thing, and uh, it's not. You know, it'd be a shame if I just agreed with every author that I read, and and I. So I don't want to say it's a bad story. In that respect, I, I do, I, I do enjoy the fact that I read it, and that I thought about free will, and I thought about morals, and I thought about all these things, and so it was a valuable experience to read it. But uh, I'm definitely okay yeah. with giving it the score that I did. Yeah, Steven, it's done. I'm sure the author, if he were to ever listen to this, <laughs> will contact you with his thoughts. Um, but oh, what's no. done is done. Uh, all right, so we're finished, um, and that leads us to next week's story. Who's up next? Dean, I assume, because I chose last week. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'll I'll uh, let you guys guys know tomorrow. Perfect. Well, new author, okay? Yeah, yeah, new no author. Repeats. It'll be something different. Do the guy that did the sequel to um, uh, Blade Runner. Do that guy. Oh, okay, okay. He's, we'll he's a, a prolific... I forget, oh, what's his name? I think He's a prolific writer. But anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll let you choose. Uh, never mind. All right. Okay. Did, um, oh, sorry. I just wanted to ask, but I can probably ask tomorrow. But, you know, Stephen King writes, like, thrillers and things. Does he ever write short stories? Well, he's a prolific writer, so I'm going to bank on that he does, yeah. Alright, I want to try, I'm going to try and find one of his for my turn. I feel like I should choose a, someone who's really well known, because you people yeah. are talking about names that I don't know, and you're like, oh, he's so well known, so famous, and so... Hey, we're all learning. Well, I mean, we talked about doing Dark Tower. That was That's a Stephen King. Yeah, I bet it's long form, oh. though. It's a bit, it's... It's like nine books, and each book is like 400 pages, so it's yeah. a pretty... I'm not yeah. a big Stephen King fan, I just know who he is. <laughs> Fancy that, that you know him. That, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, I do like what I've read, but I don't know all his work. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alright, and now I'm just curious. Yeah, we can have a look, look and see what we can find. Alright, it'll be a surprise for next week. Yeah. Sweet. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Alright, enjoy your guys' dinner and whatever you what have you got planned for the night. Take care. Yeah, enjoy your evenings. See ya. Good night. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Bye.